Welcome back. Uh, for those of you who are new, my older audience or the people who've been with me for a while know this is going to be what we call a sit and chill video because I'm going to give updates on stuff and you saw the title. I'm engaged. Um, okay, so full transparency, I want to give you the full story. This is such a, in my opinion, for me it was very touching, obviously. Um, one of the most wonderful moments of my life. Very cute, very sweet. I think you guys are going to like the story as to what happened and uh, here soon I'm going to be introducing him to you guys because we're thinking about doing some videos together. Um, he's hilarious. You'll love him. He's just great. So okay, let's, uh, where do I begin? Um, so to those of you who are new, hi, uh, these are just going to be sit and chill videos where I just, like I said, I give up. I already said that. Oh my gosh, Biden is rubbing off on me now. I'm just like repeating myself and, and whatever. So okay. Uh, where do I leave off? Where do I begin? Um, so you guys, if you didn't see the last one, I did a health update um, where we talked about figuring out my health issues. I figure what I'll do, as long as I can keep this channel active, it's always the goal to be active on social media and my health goes down and I have to stop or something happens in my life that's a big transition. Typically it's both, right? Um, and you guys have just seen me through so much. It's weird. I forget that like on this channel, we've known each other almost like five years. I met y'all in 2020, if you remember. So, it, well, it's four years, because it was like May 2020 is when I started, I think, May, June. So it's been about four years. Y'all have known me for a bit, and you've watched a lot of stuff go down in my life. And it's so nice to have nice updates to give you guys. So if you saw the last health thing, um, we figured out that I have cancer, and that's something we have been going after. If you want to know about that, I have the whole video. And guys, um, the treatments I'm doing, the things I'm doing are working. And like I said, I think I just said this, uh, I, I just filmed like an hour of just watching Biden so my brain is mush. Um, every six months I'll probably update you guys just to let you know where I'm at and the treatments I'm doing and if they're working or not. And I do that because I think some people get kind of confused by my motives. Not you guys, but like I've been on the internet for a while and I have an older channel where people like to uh, criticize and be mean about me talking about my health. The reason I've talked about it, guys, is because I knew that I was not going to be here that much longer because of how severe the issues were and I had to figure it out. And thank God it's been steps and progressions and different therapies I've tried and this one worked and this one didn't to where I'm at to where I am now. And I know many of you are going through chronic health struggles and can't get help. I couldn't get diagnosed. I couldn't get anybody to take me seriously. This is a huge problem we have in this country, especially for women and especially for women minorities. It's even worse. So I want to do everything I can to not just give you guys leads and information on what I've done that works for me. I feel like part of my job, I'm getting like emotional. My job on earth is to bring back these, these suppressed technologies that can make us better. And what better way to do that than the universe forcing me to be sick and making me my own guinea pig in doing this. Um, and it's not just me. I'm just one voice of several. But I believe that we should be healthy. All of us. I also believe that the aging process we go through is BS. Not that we're not going to age at all, and not that you can't age gracefully, but the way our bodies become decrepit in the way that they do, this is more of toxic overload that nobody's talking about. Toxicity in our food, our water, our air. Those are videos for another day, but let's talk about the engagement. Okay, so I'm just like, where do I begin? I'm going to begin with uh, how I met this guy. Um, I'm so excited to tell you guys this story. Uh, so I'm just, I'm so excited. So I'll tell you like what happened. I did not expect to get engaged. I did not expect to meet the one at all. So you guys remember I started towards the very end of the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial. I was covering some of that and I was at the tail end of it. It was a dying story. But um, this was in June, June, yeah, June 2022. Um, I was covering that here. I had done, I covered it and done well on TikTok and blew up my TikTok at the time. So I was pretty excited. Um, if you guys remember, I had worked with Catcoin, which was a disaster. I don't even know if they're still around anymore. That's not a diss. I just, I have no idea. Um, and uh, I was kind of in a ruined situation. And so you guys just saw me once again disappear. Um, I lost my home, which was not fun uh, because my rent doubled and I'm disabled, not knowing I was fighting cancer. I cannot explain to you the levels of pain physically I've gone through. And I'm somebody I can go through a lot of physical stamina. I think there's a big misconception that chronically ill people, we're whiners or we just don't know how to handle. Most of us, it, it's actually the opposite. And you guys know me, when it comes to work, I'm a type A person. In fact, something my partner had to learn. 
And I think a lot of people don't believe me until they really get to know me where I'm like, with me, you have to rein me in when it comes to work. You have to help me set boundaries with myself. Many of us are, you know, um, A types. We are overachievers. And that's part of what happens. I'm digressing though. So anyway, um, through that, here's the progression of what happened. I, uh, I moved in with a parent that I didn't know was dying. This parent was hiding it from everybody. I could tell. Um, but this was a situation where there was nothing I could do. I had no evidence, but my intuition, I knew. I was like, I don't think this person is longer than six months. Um, so what happened was uh, I didn't want to leave my home. I did not want to leave. I was so upset. But the night, I and this parent and I were, have been estranged for most of my life. This was a weird situation. PTSD was high flaring. And this was in, oh gosh, this was in September, late September of 2022. The first night I'm there, I am so freaked out having PTSD. I'm laying in bed and I'm with a parent that I'm estranged from. This parent is now elderly. It's not a disrespect. It was just a lot to take in. And we just had this big move cross state. And I also had to speak to roommate that day. Um, it was a lot. It was a lot. It was a lot that happened in like a week period. And and so anyway, um, I uh, I was laying in bed and I have this one dating app. I've tried one dating app, Bumble. Um, and I hadn't had any success on it. I'd actually only met one person off of it and the person was fine. It was nice and it went nowhere. Like most of it's small conversations that go nowhere. Weird, but okay. I'm telling you to say, I did not expect to meet anybody. I just went on there and was just, I was like, I was on Facebook. I was just trying to do things to refocus. When I have PTSD flare ups, it's we refocus the energy. And so the first one that popped up was my guy. The first one that popped up adorable. He had like action shots where he's bungee jumping. He's into personal finance, personal growth and development. And I'm like, ah, and he's adorable too. And I was like, interesting. And I'm very conservative on these apps. Like I'm, I'm okay. I'm a little bit different. Like, okay. So for instance, you know, like back in the nineties, everybody thought Brad Pitt was beautiful. He is beautiful. He's symmetrically appealing, right? That's a lot of like beauty is, is your face asymmetrical and all of that. He, he is, he's beautiful. Um, he's very symmetrical, not into it. I, I'm just not into a lot of what, like what people think are mainstream pretty, but my boyfriend is pretty. He's very, very gorgeous. I say that to say, I don't swipe on a lot of people. I just don't, right? It's going to take more than you like, especially like if you're out here, like showing off your body. And if that's, you know, disrespect as a man, it's hard to date out here. I get it. It's not my thing though. So it ha it takes a lot for me to want to swipe on somebody. I got an immediate message. Didn't expect that. Um, immediately, we, we so we chatted, you know, back and forth for maybe 20 minutes. Then he says, I'm not in town right now. Um, he's from Nebraska. He's from Omaha. And I'm in Omaha right now doing some work stuff. I will be back. Cause I think this was like on a Thursday or something. I'll be back this weekend. I want to take you out to dinner. I was like, that's cute. I'm being BS'd because I just, and no, no disrespect to him. I've just I've been through this before, right? So I didn't really think anything of it. I didn't think it was going to go anywhere. I was like, oh, that was a cute conversation. I'll never hear from him again. Monday, I get a text. I'm back. Where would you like to go? And I'm like, who, who is this? What do you want? <laughs> and then I realized, I'm like, oh, it's you. Why are you texting me? So I was very, by the way, he's aware of all of this. Like there are no secrets. We love, I love talking about when we first were dating and you know, you put on your best impression, your best airs. And it's like, what were you thinking then? What was I thinking? And it's very interesting. So, okay. Sorry, I'm getting sidetracked. I'm getting like overwhelmed. I like him so much. So, um, I was like, oh, we're, we're this, you want to, he's like, yeah, I told you, you want to take you out. Um, do you still want to go? And I was like, okay. Like, I thought he was cute. I wasn't like, and I think it was both of us. We weren't like Im immediately smitten. We didn't know each other. And I'm very on guard. I am, okay, I'm a social person. It's weird. What is that called? Um, Where you're really outgoing. Okay, extroverted. I appear as an extrovert, but I'm more of an introvert. And it's because like, I need, I am so good at being with crowds and people that I need my downtime. I need my quiet space. I'm a Gemini. I need both sides of that. Um. Okay, where ah, where was I? I'm not editing this video, so like if I start going off track or something, you just you guys are just gonna roll with it because this is like this is a conversation. Um, okay, so I was really surprised he wanted to go out, but I was interested, but I was scared because I don't 
yeah, I have a lot of social anxiety with people. In fact, part of why I'm good with crowds and people and I'm very entertaining and whatever is because I, it's kind of like, here's a deflection, here's a show, don't hurt me. These are things I work on. I've worked on over time, right? A lot of social anxiety that I don't really talk about. And I've just, I have PTSD, I have trauma. A lot of, a lot of us do, especially all young women. I've been through a lot of stuff, especially a lot of stuff with men. My dating history hasn't been the best. Um, I would say, and you guys remember roommate, roommate was <clears throat> the best one I've dated so far, albeit he had his own toxicity, we had our own issues. I will never speak very ill of him because no matter what, the man kept me alive. I will always be grateful. I think he knows that. Like, I will always be grateful and I wish him well. And that's kind of where I leave that. But, and we don't talk. But anyway, so, um... I was surprised, but I was like, okay, I'm open to this, but scared. And so I said, I'll need a phone call or a video call. I, I need to have some interaction to so I, for my safety. Immediately, okay, uh, here's my schedule. When would you like to do it? I was just, and I, I was getting more and more like scared of him. The more he was actually like doing the things he was saying, like it was weird. The more he was presenting as a decent guy, the more scared I was. I was like, what's this? What's your angle? But I didn't say that to him, but that was just like my internal monologue. But I was like, okay. So what we did was we decided we were going to do a video call like that next week. And then if it went well that weekend, we would go out. And so he also was like, where do you want to go? What do you want to do? And I was so overwhelmed by it because I just not used to it. And I said, I don't know. He's like, well, how about this? What if you make a list of places you would like to do. He's like, you know, I'm new to the area. I'd love to try some stuff out and I'll make like a list of five fun date ideas. And I'm thinking, okay. And then I thought, never happened. He comes back the next day, five, and it's not just, it's like dinner and a show, dinner, and let's go to the haunted houses or an attract. Like he actually, these were really well thought out and I was frozen. He's like, what are your ideas? And I'm like, uh-oh, this is becoming real. This is becoming real. So I said, hey, listen, I said, I really appreciate how much time you've spent with this. I'm a little bit skittish. And here's the thing, guys, I'm very upfront. I am out just very upfront. I was also not well with my health. I was really not doing well. I didn't know if I could go, could I get through a date? Can I go to dinner? And with my diet at that point, my diet was way weirder. I was eating mostly, you know, um, carnivore. My diet was so weird and my biggest insecurity on dating somebody was who's gonna wanna date me? I've got health issues and I'll probably never give you kids and my situation is strange. So I told y'all, I wasn't like looking to date because my thought process was when you date somebody, come at them when you're in your power as a person. I knew that I wasn't in my power as a person in terms of where my life was. So I said, okay, I said, um, I said, I am a little bit scared of people I haven't met and I said, also, and this is something else he didn't know at the time. I was also trying to be respectful. He was offering to take me out to expensive places and pay for it. My thought is when I'm first getting to know you, don't you spend a dime on me. Now, I'm not one of those people that'll get mad. I will appreciate it, but it's more, I'm here to get to know you and I don't require you to entertain me. I think, and I'm not trying to knock women. I understand the psychology of why women like when the man takes them out and does dates and stuff and pays for them. I'm more like, let's do that once we know we have a solid base of there's feelings there, we wanna pursue this. Otherwise, for me personally, I feel like there is an element of taking advantage or a power dynamic. So I said, could we just like grab a coffee and go to a park? There's my favorite park in Kansas City, Loose Park. It's near um, the plaza. And I said, we can get coffee on the plaza. It would be great. And, I, and he's like, okay. Now, in his mind, it's so funny because like I said, we've had the conversations. He just thought, well, God, like I just spent all this time and energy planning these dates and you didn't even plan anything. And now you just want to go get coffee. You're just wasting my energy. Later, he realized, because we talked about it, I said, well, part of it was I was trying to respect your time and energy. He's like, I didn't realize because most women don't do that. So later he was like, that's actually really sweet. But that's what was like happening internally. So, okay. We did the phone call and my, it was my father who passed. Um, he's the one I was staying with. He couldn't hear very well and didn't wear hearing aids and he loves Fox News. <laughs> it's so funny, one parent is extremely left and the other parent's extremely right and both in the toxic factions, both of them. So I warned him, I said, so you will probably loudly hear Fox News going on in the background 
it's always on. The TVs are always on. I don't watch them. And he's like, it's okay. So this guy to our video date, first he was cute. He was who he said he was. You know, I got to show myself and who I say I am. He immediately comes out with, so I have a list of 30 questions to ask in case, you know, things get stale and we can get to know each other. I cut him off and I start laughing and I'm like, who are you? And so we ended up spending the day, I was laughing, not in a mean way. It was like, it was very endearing. I was like, who does that? He's like, well, I'm somebody that comes prepared. And I laughed. I was like, Boo Bear, I am adorable and funny. I am the entertainment here. And I want you in the show. We're going to create a show together, basically. Let's have some fun. You don't need any of that. But like you, I said, out the bat, I'm impressed. What man comes that prepared? And he's like, I'm just a very prepared person. I get things done. And I'm not used to that, guys. And I just, we just laughed like, we did a 30 minute Zoom call. We just laughed and laughed and had so much fun. So at that point we hung up and he's like, he texts me, would you still like to go on the date? And I'm like, yeah, and I'm all ready, right? So on our first date, I am late for two reasons. Number one, uh, I get a ticket. I get a ticket for not wearing my seatbelt. I was so excited. Um, and the officer was very nice. It was a $10 ticket. In fact, we were laughing and joking. So it wasn't a big deal, but it made me late by 20 minutes. So, and I'm somebody, I like to be early. So I'm texting, I'm really sorry. And then I realized, I'm like, I don't think I have any Benadryl. And my health issues were so bad. We were gonna walk from a coffee shop to the plaza to this park. It was gonna be a little walk, not a huge walk. And we're gonna be outside. And this is in October now, the weather's changing. I went, ah. So then I had to stop and where I stopped is not the nicest area of Kansas City and it took like 20 minutes because the cashier was just talking to everybody and there was some sports game going on. So I'm like 40 minutes late. I'm freaking out and I'm texting. I'm like, I'm literally down the road. I'm so sorry. And I felt so bad and I thought, he's gonna think he was stood up and leave. So as I'm driving by on the plaza, I see him sitting outside, I get terrified. And I have a thought, just keep driving, just keep driving. D don't do this, you don't know this guy, this isn't safe. And I just basically got really brave. And I said this phrase to myself, be brave, Katie, you're good at being brave. So I parked, I came out, and this is so funny because there's been a, we have argued about how this went down. I walked up, guys, I, I wish I could show you the outfit. I was in this like little white halter top. I have these bright, these leggings that are bright, pink and purple <laughs> and these purple sparkly boots. You guys might've seen me wear these boots because I'm just going to be me, right? I have a little jacket on that sparkles. I'm just going to be me. I don't care. So I walk up there and I said, hi, are you Aaron? I'm Katie. It's nice to meet you. He gets up, turns and goes in the coffee shop and doesn't say anything. That's what I experienced. And I stood there terrified and I went, what's happening? And I said, okay, I have two choices. I run or I follow him. I'm already this far. Let's follow him. Now he says, that he actually said, hi, let's get some coffee. Nice to meet you. Now, what I know about him now is he is, I don't know if I would say, it's not soft-spoken. He's got low tones to his voice. And if he doesn't know you, he's going to be a little more reserved. So I think he probably did say something. I just didn't hear it. So we've talked about that now. And he was like, I wasn't that, I know I would have said so. And he's not the kind of person that would do that, but it's just funny looking back now. So we go in and get coffee and it's really loud. And I don't know what to do. So also my parent smokes and they were heavy smokers, smoked in the home. And I was terrified, I had so much perfume and body spray on. So I just, one of the first things I said is we're waiting for coffee and it got quiet. I looked at him, I said, I'm sorry if I stink. And he just kind of looks at me like, huh? And I said, so, I, and he basically was like, you know, I put on a bunch of perfume because I live with my dad, as you know, and he's a heavy smoker and I'm afraid I smell like a street walker and I used more colorful, funny language. And I said, and I, I just hope I don't smell. So if I stink, I'm sorry. And he just started laughing and laughing. He thought it was really, really funny. And so like he, we laughed for a couple minutes about it. And then on top of that, I was worried because if you guys remember my hair had been falling out, it had been regrowing. I had so many hair issues and thankfully it's gotten so much better and healthier, um, which I'm so happy about. And I just gotten a haircut for the date. And he goes, by the way, your hair looks really nice. So we get the coffee and we walk. And as we're walking, we're talking. And my parent at the time, so this is where I kind of understand a little more if I've been covering Biden, what Biden is going through, because my parent, we're pretty sure, had undiagnosed Alzheimer's or dementia, something in there. When I, and you know what? It probably was diagnosed. I think he was keeping it from all of us because what I, I noticed similar things with him that I do with Biden, like those brain barriers are coming down and basically more of your true personality comes out. And my father, God bless him, 
was prejudiced and would say some prejudiced things against overweight people, against minorities, um, and it became more blatant. So I started off with, you know, just to try to entertain, I said, do you want to hear racist boomer stories from my father? And so I was telling him the latest crazy thing you said, and we're laughing about how nuts it is. And uh, my guy also, he is, um, he looks Asian. He uh, He's American. He was born here, but his uh, mother is South Korean and was adopted. So it's a bit funnier for him because for him, it's like, you know, he's dating me and it's like, oh, am I going to contend with your racist father? To which I told him, I said, don't worry, I'm not going to put you in a position you ever have to meet him, which kind of happened. So anyway, uh, first date, we walked around, we talked. It was like a three hour date. It was great. And the other thing was he said up front, which I loved, he said on first dates, I don't do kissing or hugging. I just feel like it gets really awkward. So that's typically a boundary I set. Are you okay with it? I'm like, are you my soulmate? Don't you dare touch me. Thank you. But he had this tattoo on his arm of like, it's like press play, rewind those buttons towards the end. And I said, I, we were like, I liked him. We were liking each other. We're vibe. And I said, what is that? He goes, oh, he's like, I, you know, we talked a lot about self-help stuff and he's somebody that he didn't like the projection of his life and his life is great. He's a great guy. He didn't like where it was going and he got up and changed it. And he said, this is to remind me that I am in control of my destiny and my path and I choose what happens to me and I can make positive changes. Be still my heart. That's the moment where I was like, oh, I would kiss you, but I didn't. So we walk back and very sweetly, he asks for a second date and I said, yes. And uh, date two was, uh, and so that was a week later, we did date two. This time I was like 45 minutes early and I let him know, I am early and I am sorry about, and he was fine with me being late. It was no issue. And he's even said now, he's like, he's done a lot of online dating. I hadn't. And he said, it's really normal for things to get weird and awkward. I've just learned to roll with the punches and thank God, because it's 45 minutes late the first date, not meaning to be. So anyway, um, Oh, and, and irritatingly enough, I had been a drill in my car. I had had it. So me being as late as I was didn't have to happen. I was mad. But anyway, okay. And my battery's going to die in a minute. So I'll have to, there'll be a little cut. Just kind of let you guys know. So day two, we went to Union Station and did coffee this time. This time I bought the coffee. And it was so funny because of my health issues. I that, at that point couldn't drink coffee or I even teas I was weird with. So I, when I got the coffees, guys, I pretended to drink them. <laughs> And on the first day, I spilt some of it on myself, not meaning to. I was just like, look at me, I'm normal. But also up front, I did tell him, hey, look, I've got chronic health issues I'm battling. Um, I'd rather not do a restaurant yet. We still don't know each other. I'm a little bit weird with food. He's totally fine with it, totally fine. And I was so happy because I was so insecure, like, who's going to date me? We had a great time. I showed him around this area, Union Station, Crown Center, um, he did this geo thing, geocaching or something where he found something people put like, it's like a buried treasure, but not really treasure. It's like it's just some little game. And we had a really good time. And after the second, oh, and on the second date, he asked, can I hug you at the beginning of the date and at the end? And he was a really good hugger. And I thought, I don't want the hug to end. And so we were just, and we, and then, so we would text in between that, which is, it's still so weird for me. I remember you pick up the phone and you call people. I'm old school, but Anyway, for the third date, and I had to actually get counseling help on this because I didn't know what it was. Third date, I got a text that said, I've really enjoyed spending time with you. Typically on a third date, I'd invite you over for dinner and I'd cook for you, but I know your diet is weird. He also knew at that point, like, this is another thing. If I like you, I don't look you in the face. I'll tell men that, but it still confuses them. And you know what? Like, no harm, no foul. I get it. So he was also knew I was, he knew I was skittish about touching and stuff just cause I've been through a lot, right? And so he's like, I would invite you over, but I don't want to scare you. And it's not a make or break thing, but you know, I'd like to start, we talked a lot about who we are in our past. I'd like to make some memories and stuff. And so let me know what you would like to do for a third date. And at first I was like, did he say he doesn't want to see me? So I have this counseling guy I worked with. And he, and I told him, you know, I was telling him, I'm like, I don't really know what to do. And he laughed. He was like, no, he's interested. I'm like, well, how do you know? He's like, is he still talking to you? Yes. Did he ask you for a third date? Yes. Is he saying he wants you to come over? Yeah. He's interested. He's like, men are dynamic. Men are very focused in one direction. He's not going to do all those things if he's not interested. I'm like, oh no. He's like, text him back. Say, yes, I will come over. And so I, and I was like, but isn't that me inviting myself over? And he's like, oh my God, he's letting you know. He's like, he's basically trying to let you know he wants you to come over without scaring you. That's what he's doing. And I was like, are you sure? Yes. 
And I was like, I'm worried about the diet. He's like, he's a man. He's not going to care. What if I don't really want him to cook for me? He's not going to care. Okay. I text him. I was like, I'd love to come over. Can I just come over there? Is that okay? Is it rude for me to invite myself? Um, I said, you know, I don't want to do dinner. My diet's kind of funny. And he knew that. And I said, it's just, I'm insecure about, you know, having to just eat a bunch of steak in front of people. And I hate steak. <clears throat> so is that okay? He's like, yeah, that'd be great. And then um, it was just very sweet. And he was like, would you like to try cuddling? <gasps> and I said, okay. And I knew I was going to be terrible at it. Not that I am terrible at it, but I was just terrified. So I went over um, and we watched How I Met Your Mother, uh, which I wasn't super into, but it was just something he and his family watched. Hold on, my battery's going to die. Okay, sorry. I hope this is one of my good ones. I only have like, I have three batteries, but like only two of them semi work. We're ordering more. Um, so also, if you guys didn't notice, I have my setup, but it's not decorated yet. Um, I've asked my partner. I'm so bad at decorating. I'm like, can you help me? And we just moved. So all my stuff is everywhere right now. Uh, but we'll, we'll get there. But I'm so excited. Thank goodness for my partner. He helped me set everything up. Couldn't have done it without him. But okay. So third date happened. Super, super stiff the whole time. But I did cuddle. I couldn't get comfortable. Poor guy. And um, he asked... If, and I believe he had asked before if he could kiss me. And so I was like, okay, I'll, I'll try it. And so I did. We, we, it, ha it was twice. It was very quick because I was very scared. And he's like, well, I got to go to bed. And I'm like, okay. And I walked away from that going, well, I'll probably never see him again. I was really bad at that. And he just kept texting me that night. It was, it was so nice to see you. I'm so happy you came over. We're now cuddling experts. And I was just like, who is this guy? Like, what is happening? And so anyway, after the... Uh, after the third date, he let me know he was going to be going on a trip with his family to Nashville. And I said to him, I'm like, okay. I was like, well, I don't want to disrespect the time with your family. So just so you're aware, you won't be hearing from me. You are more, unless you want me to, you're more than willing, welcome to text me or whatever. I just don't want to disrespect that time. He's like, that's really nice. Okay, I'll see you when I get back. And then I remember thinking, well, wait a second. You're not going to text me at all? So like, it's so funny. Like I have self-awareness when I do dumb things, when I have like dumb things I do, right? And so I realized I'm like, I told him he doesn't have to and I'm being unfair and I didn't hear from him and I got kind of worried and I just thought, well, am I never going to hear from him again? But literally the moment the plane landed in Kansas City, because it was like a four-day thing, he texted me. I, I'm still sitting in the taxi. We just got here. I'd really love to see you. Are you free tomorrow? <gasps> okay. So, um, and the relationship just progressed. And within the first month, he asked me to be his girlfriend. And um, he's just been wonderful. He is really funny. He is a software developer, another one. I That's just like the third one. They like me for some reason. Um, he is one of the most interesting people. Let me tell you a little bit about this guy. He was going to school to be a doctor. He was in uh, not is either pre-med or like beginning of med school. And he realized, I don't want to do this. <laughs> So he's he's one of those like top of his class, really smart guys, had like a full ride paid for to college. Um, so then he decided he was instead he was going to shift into biology. My partner is a literal scientist, got his degree in biology, went and was like a science, like a actual scientist in places. That was his job title. And this is one of the reasons I love him so much is because he has a science background and I love bouncing all my weird stuff off. And we also, we're super self-help. We're also looking, we both love, we're passionate about looking at medical stuff and breaking cutting edge medical things. And even though he didn't become a doctor, he still has a passion in those areas. He just didn't, he, he realized he didn't want the lifestyle, which I totally understand. Um, but he still has a passion for all of that. So it's been, as much as I thought it, my health issues would be a burden to him, it's for him, it's been, kind of a fascinating puzzle of helping me put it all together. And he's also, he's he's somebody, he hasn't, he's not like me in the sense that he hasn't been through a lot in life. He comes from a good family. His family's really nice to me and likes me, which I'm not used to. He is more of a normal guy. I'm not used to that at all. This is a really nice, part. he's never raised his voice at me. Never. Like, it's been a weird transition for me to go to, and it's not that he doesn't have his own issues, but they're minor and he's aware of them and it's not, and he'll actively work on stuff. This is a guy who, he's a man that does things. And he was a scientist and he decided he didn't like where his life was. This is not the life he wanted. Went back to school, got his master's in program development. And um, then uh, moved to Kansas City because he said, okay, I want to meet the one and then met me and uh, it's been great. So uh, here's what happened. Um, my 
father was getting worse and worse, but doing things that were detrimental, like he would take my car without me knowing, not being insured, drive it around and messed it up. And then would get mad if I would try to set boundaries and say no. And because of the way I've, because of the relationship I have with my parents, I didn't feel safe with that. Not because anything happened, but other than the things I'm telling you. Um, I, so, and this was about six months into our relationship. And my partner knew about what was going on with my, my father and I would come crying and the, it, I was trying to hide the stress, but towards the end, I just broke down crying. And I was just like, I don't, I don't know what to do. And we'd already talked about his lease being up in a few months and if we wanted to move in together. And he said, just come move in. We want to move in anyway. And I said, it's only been six months. It's really soon. He said, it doesn't matter. I want you to be happy and safe. This is not a safe situation. Um, and that's what happened. So I moved in. Um, I felt bad for leaving my father. My father had been independent and on his own before, but I knew how progressively bad things were getting, but it was a situation where I wasn't allowed to go to doctor's appointments. I wasn't allowed to help anyway. We were concerned like he was going to, he had, he would get lost and drive on the wrong side of the road, but there was nothing we could do to stop that legally. We tried. So I was just kind of in a situation where I didn't really know what to do. And also I only, it was only my observations and my intuition that told me he's not going to last that long. I didn't actually have that evidence, right? I've just learned to listen to my intuition. Um, so we, so once in, it was June of 2023, we moved into our own place and a week later my dad passed. Um, I just come back to TikTok actually it was the day after and that was really hard. I had a lot of guilt. Did I do the wrong thing by leaving? Um, my partner was wonderful. He was wonderful. Um, he understands my situations and he has basically said, I got us. He said, I want you to build your social media and I want you to be healthy. I want you to be happy. He also knows what I'm capable of doing. He's watched me explode social media. He's seen it in real time. And he's basically said, I will take care of us. I want you to just do what you came here to do. And I'm about to cry because I have not had that, not in that way. Roommate helped me, but I was charity in the end. There's a lot of things y'all don't know about what happened with roommate and I'm gonna keep private because I respect what he did. But it wasn't a girlfriend boyfriend situation. It was, it even if it was for a little bit, um, it was more of a charity, which I'm grateful for. Having a partner, I, in my situations, it was always, and even with me with roommate in the beginning, it was always me having to build people up and help them. Um, always me giving my energy. This is the first time I've had stability, I've had security. I've never experienced that before. Um, and I just like him so much. It's, he knows everything about me. He knows my weird stuff. He knows the things I talk to aliens. He thinks it's fascinating. He sits and watch Y files with me. In fact, we would love to do, uh, reactions to Y files because he comes at a lot of stuff from the scientific area, but it's he, and it's, it's so funny because you'll hear people, especially like people on the left and my lefties, I love you. I'm not calling you out. I'm calling out the toxic ones, not the ones that watch me, not y'all, right? We all have toxic people everywhere, including the Republicans, a lot of toxic Republicans to the ones that watch me. I love y'all. I'm not talking about y'all, but there's a lot of, they'll say science, science, but they don't really understand what that means. He does. He understands it. So he comes at it from that perspective and he's just so, he's got a dry wit and humor. He's so funny. He makes me laugh all the time. But okay, that's to give you a little bit of our relationship, what happened with the engagement. So, okay, we also love to travel. And we had, I, we, he has a passion to go to the Southwest, just like me. I always wanted to be in Sedona, always. And that's always been like the spiritual Mecca hub. But it's not just because of that. I've always felt drawn to it. And he's like, I was going to go to the Southwest after Kansas City. He said, I was going to spend two years here trying to date. If I didn't find anybody, I was going to go to Kansas City. By the way, when he moved here as the first person he dated too. So it was really sweet. <clears throat> um, so uh, this was in, we planned a trip in January. We planned this trip. We, what we decided was <clears throat> we're going to go to the Southwest and spend time like a month to see if we like it. And we didn't know where to go. And I talked about Phoenix. And when we looked, everything, the top, the top places were to go, it all surrounded the Phoenix, Arizona area. And that felt right to both of us. So we said, let's do it. And we planned this trip. Um, and it was amazing. First, we stopped in Oklahoma City, my old stomping grounds, just because that's where the trip was. Then we go to Roswell, New Mexico, then to Phoenix. Um, so we had talked before. He said he wanted to marry me. He said he wanted to get engaged. But with us, there's no rush on anything. Also, um, he would ask me about what, what ring and I'm one of those people, don't you dare spend much money on me for a ring 
Some people, what, like, th the, what is it? They say you should save up three months of your salary. No, no. If it's more than a hundred bucks, it ain't worth it. But I told him, I'm like, there's this ring I've always really wanted. It's called a unicorn poop ring. Um, it's really pretty. It looks like space. And so uh, he's like, okay. But I didn't think anything of it, right? So Roswell, and I'm going to get emotional. Um, Roswell, New Mexico was a big deal for me. Roswell is, uh, I'm getting emotional. Roswell is where the ETs crashed their UFO in the 40s. And I've always felt drawn to go there. To me, it's like going home. It's like going to where your your ancient burial grounds. I'm getting emotional. So he knew that. And that's why he said, we're going to plan the trip to make sure to go to Roswell. And we stayed a couple days in Roswell. First of all, um, I'm getting emotional because I liked it so much. Uh, and it, now it has a whole different meaning. But if you've ever been to Roswell, everything is alien themed. They have a McDonald's that's shaped as a UFO. It's the coolest thing. I was so excited to be there. And my partner planned everything out, as he does, planned everything out perfectly. So um, there are a couple, it's kind of misleading on where the crash site is. You have to really research and you got to get all the info when he did. It's like a three hour drive in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of nowhere. About an hour in, we lost all cell reception. It is the middle of nowhere. Now it sits in between government land and somebody's farm but to get to it you have to pass through somebody's farm but apparently the people who own it are real nice there's a trail they know people come in and out like as long as you're not being rude and destructive they don't care right and that morning we went out guys everything was happening so we were we th this was january of 2024 early january roswell doesn't really get much snow snowstorm that morning like nothing was working. I couldn't get my routine stuff done. The tires were flat. We went to Starbucks. It took an hour and a half to get our drinks. It was like all these things kept happening to stop us. And it's like, now you look back and it's like this, it's almost like sometimes that happens when the universe is testing you. But magically, once we were able to get in the road, the snow stopped, the weather got better, the clouds parted. We had this wonderful drive out there. And he had these things called, I think, snake gators. They're like, <clears throat> excuse me stuff you put on your shins in case there's snakes but it's he said it's winter we shouldn't have a problem and we had sticks in case there's snakes it's more about the summer but just to be careful and it's about an hour little hike <clears throat> and it's a beautiful there's mountains around it's not on mountains but it's mountains and I'm gonna get emotional about this um so there's all these little valleys and they call them little valleys it's like holes kind of up and down kind of hill, it's kind of hilly-ish, but it's like these like valley craters, right? As we're walking. So there used to be this stone monument and now it's like, you can see where the stones were, but it's been taken down for some reason on your, when you walk up on your left. And then you're supposed to, um, there, you're gonna see the crash site, the crater site, but there's so many weird craters, it's hard to tell. And my partner's looking and I'm just wandering around and we go into this one divot and it's like my whole body started feeling electric. I'm a very intuitive, sensitive person. I said, this is it. And he was able to pull it up. After a couple minutes, he's like, you're right. And I just stood there and it's one of the most spiritual experiences I've ever had. I don't know if this will make sense to you guys, but I can go somewhere and experience it. I don't need a tour guide. That happened when I was uh, 14. First time I went to Europe, I went to London and we went to Stonehenge. And with Stonehenge, my... My, uh, my, my mom and my sister, they, they had this back then. It was like this little speaker and you'd have a tour guide and you'd walk to these little places and they'd give you all this history. I took off and I started jogging. I jogged around Stonehenge. I could just feel it. I could see what was going on. I could feel the energy. And it was, that was another one of those things where it's a spiritual experience for me. And I was like, I want to travel. It was like that. It's like, I could see what happened. I could see it in my mind. I could, I could see, um, there was a, there were a couple survivors and one of them was really freaked out and I could feel it. And basically this survivor, this is what I felt, knew I can't, I'm never gonna go back home and had to make a decision on what am I gonna do? And it was really touching and really hard to see it. Um, and I remember just this big voice that said, find your path. And at that point I was really struggling with what I'm here to do in the world. Because I feel more and more called to talk about my alien friends and my ET brothers and sisters. And I'm just scared of being called crazy. But at this point, the internet thinks I'm crazy anyway, right? It's almost like the things that have happened to me before on the internet, the things with that company, 
and being defamed and having all that stuff happen. It happened for a reason. It was like they already think it's so you don't have anything to lose. And I just figured the best thing I can do, it doesn't matter if I'm right, be my authentic self. And I want to bring back the technologies they tell me about. I want to be a living vessel of trying to help make an intergalactic civilization. And the way I'm going to do it is to talk about it. And I was just, and it was so beautiful. And so I'm just standing there crying, experiencing this. And my partner says, come here and gives me a big hug. And he's shaking. And I'm like, that's weird. And I mean, it's kind of, it's a little bit cold, but like for most people, it's fine. I'm one of those people I run cold. It's my health issues. A lot of women, we run cold because of our nervous systems um, and dysregulation. A lot of times you won't be told that. But anyway, um, he's like shaking. And then he has his backpack on. He puts his backpack down and I turn around, just kind of looking around. And I turn back and he's uh, on one knee and he's got this. You're supposed to be, I don't know if you can see it. There's a little light that comes on that shines. He got this box specifically for that. He had it all planned out. Um, and he starts to, and he says, you're my best friend. And my immediate response, I like push him and I said, stop it. Because I was making this joke. We're never going to get married. It's just not going to happen. I'd been making this joke for a while. Um, I thought he was playing a prank. I didn't believe him. And I ran away. I said, you're being mean. This is mean to do to me right now. And I thought it was a joke. And he was being serious. And he, he knows me, though. This wasn't a surprise. So he waited for me to kind of calm down and come back. And he said a spiel. It was something like, you're my best friend. You're the love of my life. I can't wait to spend my life with you. I want to build a life with you. Will you marry me? And I stood there. And I uh, I was just so overwhelmed by being there. And of course, I said yes. So uh, we hugged. And then um, we got to hike back. And I got my ring. I'll show you the ring now. This is the ring. It might be silly and simple to you guys, but this is everything. This is my unicorn poop ring. <laughs> and I had told him a long time ago about it, and he remembered. I don't know if you can see it. Hold on. Um, I don't know if it'll focus, but like it's it's silver and it has and it's sparkly, and the inside is like a pearl pink, and then there's this ring of darker silver and everything sparkles. And it was under 200 bucks. It, the price has gone up a little bit because of inflation and everything, but this is my ring. I'm terrified to lose it. I hardly wear, I only wear it for special occasions. Also, you guys have watched me. You never see me wear jewelry because of, there are a couple reasons. Number one, this doesn't do it at much, but a lot of jewelry, it's metals. They're cold on my body. I get really uncomfortable. Um, number two, I have such a hard time keeping track of myself to keep track of little things. Can't do it. <laughs> Not good at it. Um, so, uh, and number three, this ring means so much to me. I would hate to lose it. I'm terrified of losing it. So he got me these little silicone rings. So sometimes I'll wear them, but I forget those too. So I asked him, I'm like, will you keep this safe for me? So if we take it out at special occasions, I'll wear it for the video. Um, and that's the story of getting engaged. Now, what happened after that? Uh, we went to Phoenix, loved it. He said he was gonna propose to me on a Phoenix mountain, but decided Roswell would be better. Actually, we also went to the Grand Canyon. If you haven't been, it's amazing. It, you can't, there's no words to describe what that, what it looks like. Like the majesty of it is just incredible. So anyway, sorry, I'm all, I'm all worked up. Um, he, uh, we went, he said he was going to do it at the Grand Canyon. Glad we didn't because where he was going to do it, it was so cold and there was a lot of people. Thought about doing it on a Phoenix mountain at sunset, but decided he wanted to do it at the place that's most meaningful to me. And he did. And it was like a symbol of, I fully support you. He fully supports me being weird and he loves it. And he likes seeing my, for him, it's, he loves to see my passion for helping people. And he loves my passion for wanting to make this planet better. Um, and he fully supports that. I'm so blessed. I'm so lucky. He is the reason I found out I had cancer. Um, in March, things were so hard with my health. I came to him, if you guys saw the video, and I said, we got to have a serious conversation. I'm in too much pain. I can't do it anymore. So we either have to find, try to find a solution soon, or we have to talk about what states are legal for end-of-life services. Not because I don't want to be here, but because I can't. My body's constantly on fire. I'm tired. He didn't give up on me. He goes to my... He goes to my medical appointments and my crunchy appointments, and he's the reason right now I'm getting on Medicaid. He is take, he's a doer, and he just does everything. And my card got full. Sorry, I'm still getting back in the swing of filming. So 
Um, and I think I was just basically saying I'm so insanely grateful to this man. Um, I never thought I would get married for real. I was not that girl that was looking to have a big wedding and do all that. I know most women are and more power to you. I'm one of those like super focused on my career and my mission in life. Um, but since I met him, and funny enough, he's the same way, didn't want kids at all. Uh, but since I met him, we have shifted that view. So that is also part of, and it's so interesting, shifting that view is part of what helped me figure out what's going on with my health. I didn't realize how much of it was reproductive. So that's something over the next couple of years I'll be working on. Um, in terms of a wedding, no date. Really, it's about me. Um, which is wonderful, so nice, in the sense of neither one of us are in a rush, especially not me, I'm just not in a rush. Um, I wanna, if we, when we get married, come at him as in my own power. So I really wanna have my health stuff figured out as much as possible and get my channels up and running um, and have them successful again. That's what I would like to do. And we talked about it. Uh, there's really hardly any family to show up on my side because of my situation. He's got a lot of family. Um, we've been thinking if we wanted to do something, nothing big, but maybe we would go to the South of France or Italy. Um, and it would be a fun trip for everybody. So the money you spend, we don't need gifts. We don't need any anything. Let's all just go have a good time. We'll go to a resort. And also um, something we're looking at, which we haven't made any decisions on. And the cool thing is, like I said, we have all the time in the world. We're looking at buying one of those $1 uh, South of France or Italy homes. Now in saying that, it's not a dollar. We're looking at at least a $100,000 investment, but it's way better than what you have to pay, the million dollars you'll pay in the States. Um, and we'd have a house in Europe. He's always wanted to go to Europe and hasn't, and I've lived there. I miss it. My heart is in Europe. I miss it so much. Um, but that's what we have down the pipeline and what's happened since then. We moved to Phoenix. We moved to Phoenix. I found that I'm calling it the intermediate med bed technology and that uh, there's a practitioner who has helped me with the cancer stuff. Also, I've been working with the PEMF. P is in Paul, E is in emergency, M is in Michael, F is in Frank. It's a mat that does uh, vibrational frequencies and that has gotten a ton of my pain under control. Most of it actually. I've been doing that now for three weeks. Cute. So between those two things, um, that's why I look so good and sound so good and I'm able to continue to do this right now. It's still gonna be a balance on building everything, but we're getting there. Um, we have this amazing five bedroom, two story home. It's pink, it's pink and we love it. I have my own film room, I have my own closet room um, and I am just with the most wonderful man who is here for me and supports me and understands me and I've never had stability in my whole life until him. I truly haven't. And um, I think I had to learn how to create from a place of stability. And I'm just grateful. And I tried in the beginning pushing him away several times and he was just calming, was okay with it. We barely even fought. Like we just laugh all the time and get along. He just doesn't hardly have any issues. I mean, like it's minor stuff. Like sometimes he's not, it's rare. It's so rare, but there've been a handful of times where he's not as sensitive to me because he's a guy. It's just like, I'm just like, really? Like your life is this breezy? But it is. And um, he has just committed to wanting to see me become the best version of myself. And I've committed to wanting to make him as happy as I can. And that's what we do for each other. Um, and at some point I will introduce him on this channel because I do think he, he is getting his toe into the social media waters. Um, and uh, yeah, and I didn't say it. This happened in January and I didn't say anything because we've had so much go on and I wasn't ready to come back yet. I wanted to get this, I wanted to talk about this when I was ready and when I was in the right place and I think that's now. So I hope you enjoyed the story and I'll keep you posted and wedding, uh, we're not even thinking about it. Earliest would be a year from now and that's early, probably a couple of years because it wouldn't be just us. We have to get the families involved and he really likes, because he'd always said, let's just go to a resort. Let's just all go to a resort for a week in Cancun. And I said, because I told him he can plan the whole thing. I don't care. And finally I said, all right, but can I pick the destination? And he loved the idea of Europe. And I said, we can stay for a month. We can stay for the summer and travel around and have fun. And, and in that time, we'll meet with realtors and go check out homes and see if it's something we actually want to do. That's like a, that's the homes thing is like a two to five years down the road. And that's just starting to look into it. But it's a really fun idea and it's one that it's an adventure we're thinking of taking on. Okay, this has been way too long. So I'm gonna go ahead and end this here, guys. I love you all so much. For those of you that have stuck with me for this long and seen me through my story, 
thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for continuing to be here. And thank you for always supporting me. So I'm going to try to end this here now before I just get too wordy because y'all know me. So I'm giving y'all hugs, Mwah. kisses, and I will see you in the next video and I will do updates when I have them. And hopefully we're going to continue on that positive train. And if not, whatever the universe throws at me, there is a reason and we're going to make it positive. All right, guys, take care. I'll see you.